today we begin decked out two. As you can see, the hole is dug. This represents about 25 hours of digging. And we even got three spider spawners just floating up over there. And the best part is after all this digging, this massive chamber, yeah, it's not big enough. Nope. Too small. Oh, do we have some plans? Do we have crazy plans? Today, guys, we're starting decked out too. I know a lot of you have been anticipating it forever. Today is going to be a very special episode because I have a lot, and I mean a lot of information that I need to, look at, look at all the storage from all the stuff we dug out on the other side too. I have plenty of stone and things now. But as I was saying, we have a lot of information to cover today. Basically, the complete game. What is decked out? What is this game? And why is it going to be so incredibly amazing? And how does it differ from the last time we made it? Before we even get started, though, those of you that are new here, first of all, I love you in your faces. But if you have no idea what decked out... Oh God! How about we just stand over here where it's nice and safe? Yeah, for those of you that have no idea what decked out is, you might have been hearing this phrase thrown around and have no idea what it is. It's time to figure it out because this is going to take up a good portion of the next many months of my content here on this channel. So there's going to be a ton of information that we need to communicate today. And I honestly have no idea how I'm going to even edit this video with all the talky talky. But before we even get into all of that insanity, I want to get right into the building. I just want to get something down here so that we can start talking about something besides a giant empty hole. So I think before we get into any of the new rules and the amazing game design changes that are coming up for Decked Out 2, I want to build level one of this dungeon first. Did I mention Decked Out 2 is going to be four levels? Yeah, it's going to be over four times bigger than Decked Out 1. So without further yammering, how about we just dive right into building? I had to dig out this extra section here because level one is going to go from right about here and go all the way over past the spider spawners over here. It's going to be massive. Welcome to the entrance and to the first level of Decked Out 2. This is, the, this is the beginning, guys. This is where it's all going to get started. And to be clear, we are embarking. We are starting a multi-month journey here. Oh, hello there. We are starting a multi... I forgot some blocks. We are starting a multi-month journey of building this epic, epic game. And guys, I cannot, I cannot even tell you how insanely excited i am but i need to stress everything you see here today is 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 rough draft it's very first oh this is not even done here right because i need water and i need a little pond here i need a lot of details and a lot of polish so don't judge yet we basically just did level design on this first level, which I'm calling the frozen tomb. Pretty much everything you see here today is going to get more polish, more refinement. This room is going to be a point of interest. I'm not sure what yet, though. Maybe we'll bury a hermit under the ice. That might be fun. And clearly it's obviously not done. We're going to have more caves going all down there and everything. What I wanted to focus on was the crypt, the tomb, the frozen tomb, which is inside here. And we're going to take a tour of it in a little bit here. And again, Again, even this outside area, this is all very rough. It's all going to change. We got the black concrete sky, though. So the majority of today's video is going to be going over decked out to the design of it, what it is, how it's going to be done, all these things. And more importantly, a lot of the changes from decked out season one back in season seven of Hermitcraft to what we're going to do differently and much better this time. So what is decked out? Well, for those that are new, it is an intense 
dungeon crawling treasure hunting game where the players have to enter this incredibly hostile dungeon that I'm going to make. They have to find their treasure and they have to get out before they get their face eaten off. And the game is going to be played over many weeks, probably even up to upwards of two months, possibly, depending on how interest goes and everything. And all the while, the players are going to be entering this dungeon dozens and dozens of times, accumulating points as they go. And at the end of the whole season, when the game's done, the person with the most points is the season two decked out champion. And just to give you a little idea of scale here, I think last time we did decked out in season seven, Hermitcraft, the Hermits ran decked out about 400 times. To enter the decked out dungeon, you're going to need a key, which is gonna look like this guy. We have custom art for so many things here. This will be the key to decked out. You simply put it in a barrel and the doors will open. I don't know where the entrance is gonna be, somewhere around here. This is all gonna be completely different. I'll make fancy doors and all that. That stuff but essentially this is where your dungeon run will begin but right after you put your key in and the doors open up and everything you're gonna get a, a compass and the compass is going to point where you need to go in the dungeon it's gonna point to your artifact the artifact is the thing that you need to acquire and is the entire goal of your dungeon run but since we're gonna have four levels in here it also the name of the the compass is going to tell you what level of the dungeon your artifact is on this is completely random you don't know if you're gonna get a level one or a level four dungeon run. So this one here, the Black Mines, that would be the third level of Decked Out. Now, of course, as you are following your compass and trying to find your artifact, there's going to be some baddies in here chasing you around. The first two levels, that being the Frozen Tombs and the Caves of Carnage, they're going to have Ravagers in them. Lots of Ravagers everywhere. Just ready to eat you and of course as you might be guessing the bottom two levels that being the black mines and the ancient city that's warden town there's gonna be wardens on all those love both of those levels i should say and uh We'll see how that turns out for the uh, for the hermits. So you follow your compass along, you're moving through the dungeon. Oh, maybe it points over here. Maybe it's in these little crypts over here. Maybe it's in these place where I forgot to add blocks. Eventually you'll zero in and this is just like decked out one. You realize, okay, it's right here. You throw your compass on the ground and an artifact will pop up in its place. Artifacts looking something like this. I'm gonna have custom art for each artifact and they're all gonna have different values and levels of importance. In fact, we have a lot of artifacts ready to go. I'm loving this custom art. So all of these right here, I'm going to give them all custom unique names and everything. These are going to be the artifacts that you find in Decked Out. Now, all the while you are following your compass and trudging through the dungeon, avoiding the Ravagers, avoiding the Wardens, trying to find your artifact, you're going to be fighting against two different systems, and that is Clank and hazard clank is how you might remember it pretty much if you if you remember from the original decked out it represents how angry the inhabitants of the uh oh don't know some scaffolding over here it represents how angry the creatures and spirits of the dungeon are with you currently as you're tromping around the dungeon opening doors making noises and even when you pick up your artifact you're going to make a lot of clank you may, clank is noise and the more clank you make the more likely you are to anger the spirits of the dungeon and sticking with the theme of decked out one the spirits of the dungeons are again going to be vexes what we did in season one of decked out was we had evokers that would be hidden in the walls and there would be little pistons that pop down and then if they're if they're visible when you walk by they release the vex and you generally have a bad day after that we're going to improve upon that so now the evokers are not going to be hidden at fixed locations they're going to ride you see down the little little gaps here these little upside down stairs they're gonna ride on rails or in mine carts on rail systems throughout the entire dungeon so when you reach a critical level of clank not even the maximum but once you start getting close to the maximum evokers are gonna start riding these rails through the dungeons and everywhere there's gonna be these little peak holes where they can see you so who knows where you'll see one who knows when they'll drive by. But the idea is the more clank you make and once you get up to maximum, that's when the maximum amount of evokers will be released into the dungeon. I'm currently thinking maybe like five evokers all spinning around and, and looping through the dungeon at the same time. 
That'd be pretty lethal. But one of the things I'm actually really excited about is the new audio system. We're gonna have, if you guys remember the heartbeat system we had from the uh, from Decked Out One with the, with the heartbeats going on and off, it was amazing. And it added so much tension to the game. I love this room, by the way, this room is great. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing, but with custom audio, we're gonna layer audio effects on it. So as Clank rises, we're gonna layer in more and more tense music that blends together and just creates this horrific tense atmosphere and scares the player half to death. Yeah, I got my super fancy uh, altar here. I need another enchanting table, but yeah, it's, it's, this is a perfect example of something that I know needs a little bit more something. I just kind of threw everything together to get the dungeon working, but we'll add a lot more detail to these walls and stuff eventually. You'll also notice it's pretty dark in here. I can turn on my, where is it? This, this little client side mod that shows light levels. I'm trying to, well, this one's, that torch won't be there, but I'm trying to keep light levels basically as, well, this is gonna be lava here. I'll talk about that in a second. But basically I'm trying to keep it as dark as possible while still keeping it spawn proof. We obviously don't want creepers and things spawning in here, but it should be pretty dark in here. And yeah, this room here, this is devious. These are gonna be filled with lava and there's gonna be a thin iron bar in the middle. So the player pretty much has to walk around unless they wanna try and parkour on top of the iron bar. But the Ravagers, they don't care. They're wide enough, they could just walk right across it. So this will be a little terrifying. The next system I want to talk about, which is kind of a peer to Clank and brand new to Decked Out 2, is called what I'm currently calling Hazard. I might change the name, but it's called Hazard. And, and one of the goals with Decked Out 2 is to make the dungeon much more dynamic and much more trap heavy. I want the dungeon to change the navigability, is that even a word, uh, of the dungeon as you're going through it. So the longer you stay in the dungeon, purely as a factor of time, the more your hazard will go up. And corridors that you previously walked through might no longer be accessible to you when you return. So the, basically as hazard goes up, it's gonna be a lot harder to get through the dungeon. Some traps may be triggered, may be armed, and those might be lethal traps, but more, more often than not, if they're not lethal, they're just obstructions. They're gonna force you to go the long way around. They're gonna really force you to have to go in an inconvenient way through the dungeon. So ha high hazard, not a good thing. You're gonna get lost real quick and frustrated. And of course, I have many, many devious ideas for traps or things that will make traveling the, the dungeon a little bit harder. For instance, there lava may, may you know drop from the ceiling and block off a corridor like this. The floor may open up, revealing spikes or something, you know, maybe some, who knows? Who knows? There's a lot of ideas I can do to make it much harder to get around the dungeon. Okay, now we are getting to the stuff that I am very, very excited about some of the bigger changes coming to decked out and right now we're going to talk about frost embers and coins both of these are items that can drop anywhere in decked out now last time we did it there was like predetermined little little barrels where they could you know spawn in and everybody learned where those spots were and they just methodically went across them what we're gonna do this time is they're gonna drop from the ceiling literally anywhere in the dungeon pretty there's just no way you'll be able to predict where they're gonna come the coins and this icon is a bit large i'll probably reduce it it looks like a dinner plate but the coins are pretty much the same as they were in the original decked out you earn these you find them in the dungeon you can take them out of the game with you and use them to purchase interesting things in the shop outside the game like basically in the in the great hall there pretty much as is but very important you want to accumulate these because you'll be able to buy some very interesting and unique things from that shop now these little guys what i'm calling frost embers these are brand new they kind of replace the punching out the soul flame systems from decked out one but are much much better they act like currency so like coins they will drop from the ceiling at completely random locations just like coins but the main difference with these guys is you cannot take them out of the game they act as a currency for that run just that one dungeon run so the more of these you acquire the better the cards you'll be able to buy at the end of that run and what's really interesting is all of these artifacts all they do is they translate into frost embers so if i get this cloak of baba da baba da ba whatever i end up calling ow you not how are you spawning in here I gotta fix the spawns in here. That could have been a creeper. Anyways, as I was saying, the cloak, if you get your artifact and get it out of the dungeon at the post-game session, you'll be able to hand in your cloak 
in exchange for quite a few frost embers like this cloak might be worth 15 frost embers or something depending on how rare it is right maybe maybe the the armor whatever i end up calling it from level four is worth 30 frost embers who knows but then you can also just find frost embers themselves like i said they fell from the ceiling and you'll be able to have cards that will extend or uh, instigate the drops of these frost embers throughout the dungeon so wherever you are you get the card to plays and more frost embers to drop thus increasing the amount of currency and the more power you have at the end of the game so at the end of the game you hand in your artifact and only if you have an artifact is it considered a victory and then like an internal shop will open up right in the post game section you'll get a bunch of ember frost embers for your your artifact and then maybe you found a handful you bring them all together and there'll be like a shop that you can then spend your embers on right there to buy various cards and what cards are available will can be completely random so we'll go into all this much more later when when we actually get to that section and are building the frost ember system and the shop and everything like that the important thing is though these cannot be taken out of the game you have to spend them on the run you earn them or if not you forfeit them back to the game okay now for the single biggest change coming to decked out here and this is the one i'm most excited about guys it is the way that your deck of cards is built and processed and how the whole deck of card systems works. So for those that don't know, Decked Out is a deck building game. It means is you collect cards and keep them in your deck of cards. And as you play the game, these cards are played and they give you some pretty significant advantages to that specific run that they are played on. That means the more you play decked out, the more cards you get, which means you are stronger and accomplish more, can go deeper into the dungeon, can get better artifacts on subsequent runs. So when you're about to start a new run, and, and again, I know this is kind of hard to visualize because we don't have the systems in yet, but you start by plugging your deck of cards, which is just a shulker box. You keep it with you, you take it into the game. You plug it into the game, okay? And in decked out two, the cards are gonna be removed from your deck of cards immediately and shuffled randomly. In decked out one last season, the cards would all be processed immediately and just provide you kind of a static benefit for that entire run. But this time we're doing things very different and a lot more interesting. In decked out two, you are not limited to just five cards. In fact, you can have as many cards in your deck as you want. The way it works is as soon as you step foot into the dungeon, Every 30 seconds, a card is randomly pulled from your deck and played, and the effects of it are immediately applied. Most of the cards will provide some sort of instantaneous effect. Some of them may provide an ongoing effect, but that effect will only last 30 seconds until the next card is drawn. So these cards are just written books with custom art, and, and this is just mock-up art. I'm gonna have stuff that I think is even better, but it's just to give you a good idea of like the, the style I'm thinking. So because they're written books, you know, I can mouse over and see what they are, skillful retreat, sweat, sneak sneak is a very basic card right i right click on it and it says it blocks two clank prevent the next two clank that would be generated so when this card is played you'll hear a sound it'll tell you that sneak was played and now the next two times that you would have generated clank it won't happen it'll be negated because this card was played regardless of when the effect happens it doesn't matter if it happens in that 30 second window or not so i have so many ideas for good cards some like for instance this is one that gives you a nice benefit but it comes with a little bit of cost it's going to generate three clank right away but eight frost embers are going to instantly drop somewhere in the dungeon for you to go find so it's kind of a little risk versus reward here i'll even be able to do some like some conditional things too so skillful retreat if you have already acquired an artifact then it will block three clank otherwise drop three more frost embers into the dungeon. So this one is kind of good, even if it's played early or later. And then there's all kinds of ideas, like meta ideas, like brilliance. Draw two more cards and immediately apply both of their effects. All of these things are possible. What's gonna make this deck management so interesting though, is because you wanna have enough cards in your deck so that, that you're constantly getting effects while you're in the dungeon, but you don't wanna have too many cards. Otherwise you're gonna dilute, like you don't wanna have 70 cards because you're not gonna get to your good ones. You wanna keep just the cards that you think are good and just enough of them to last as long as you're going to be in the dungeon and of course you can customize your deck every run if you think you want to make a deep run down to level four put more cards in if you think you just want to make a quick run to level two then you know shorten up your deck and just put your very best cards in there so you know what i could keep going for quite some time but i think that's enough game design for today i mean i have more things to talk to you about the scoring system and victory points and key distribution and dynamic difficulty systems and the shopping system all these things you guys i know you're gonna have 
have a ton of questions, okay? You can leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer them, but the best thing I would recommend is stop by one of my Twitch streams because I'm talking about it all the time. People have great questions there and we're gonna cover a lot of topics there. Speaking of streams, I also made this storage room down here and I am in the process of moving in. This portal right here links directly to my nether hub. So it's great. I love where this, this uh, storage system is here because this room here is gonna be levels one and two of decked out and then over here there's this massive cave system over here which i still have to clean out i don't think it's going to be that much digging obviously there's lots of baddies still living in here that are probably going to kill me in the face in about two seconds but we got all this space down here for level three and then all this space down here for level four i gotta light it up and stuff but a lot of space down here for the upcoming levels levels three and four where the wardens are gonna live so this all leaves me with a question for you guys i know we are all very excited to get started on decked out and dive right in and be able to see all kinds of progress but there's also this issue I really, really, really want to finish my base, this area in the middle here. So leave me a comment, guys, and let me know. Do you want to see me do a few episodes of Decked Out and then come back to the base? Or do you want to see me finish off the base first and then just go full on Decked Out after that? I'm kind of curious. You know, I really want to finish the Deep Frost Citadel here as well. What an amazing, amazing portal. Pearl is such a good builder. I've never seen anyone build with such a diverse block set and still make it look good. Unbelievably talented. Uh, hello. Hi, hi, Mr. Lever. Hi. 